Hello everyone, welcome to A plus BI. This channel is all about complex numbers and in this video we're going to be solving a very non-standard and interesting equation with complex numbers. Z equals e to the power z where e is Euler's number or you can call that the exponentiation, complex exponentiation. Now let's go ahead and take a look at the graph of these two functions first. Uh oh, they do not intersect. What is that supposed to mean? That means there are no real solutions. Wait a minute, isn't this channel all about complex numbers? Yes, it is. Now, how do we find, so this equation doesn't have real solutions, it must have complex solutions. Maybe, who knows? Some equations have no complex solutions. And we're going to use a special function, Lambert to the rescue. Yay. So let's talk about Lambert's W function. So Lambert's W function, which can be written with the big W, when it's applied on t e to the t, it gives us t. So in other words, it's the inverse of f of t equals t e to the t. So if you graph it, if you want to graph it, you can actually graph it as x equals y e to the y with Desmos, and then it'll give you the graph of Lambert's w function. The problem is, though, those are going to be the real values. Now, we do need something like this. We do need a form for our equation that looks like this. What is that form? It is something times e to the power something. And th those somethings are the same. Okay? Make sense? They're not random. So how do we put our equation into that form? Let's start with what we're given. So we have e to the z equals z. I can try to put things on the same side. How about dividing both sides by z? You don't always have to use the successful methods, right? You, sometimes you just try things and then one of them works. And then pe when people see it, they're like, wow, this is amazing, right? Well, it's still good, but anyways. Divide both sides by z and you get e to the z divided by z equals 1. But guess what? That's not good. Why? Because you have z at the bottom, which is not good at all. You don't want that. So let's do the other, it's, uh, the other way around. Divide z by e to the z. And that's going to be good, such a difference. And that equals 1 again. And now, this is good because z is in the numerator, so don't mess with the polynomial. And then, or the linear function, whatever, uh, write the e to the z as e to the negative z. Don't put it on the other side because that's going to put you back to square 1. So we can write this as z times e to the power negative z equals 1, right? Great, so we basically have e to the something with a negative power, but that can be fixed very easily. Take a look. We put a minus sign here and then we put a minus sign here. There you go. It's fixed. In other words, we multiplied both sides by negative 1 and that just did the trick. You see how quick that is? So now we have negative z times e to the power negative z equals negative 1. Wow. We do know that this equation has no real solutions, so we shouldn't try to chase any real solutions, right? unless we want to waste our time. But notice that it's in the form something times e to the power something. So let's go ahead and use Lambert's w function on both sides. w of this equals w of this. And by the way, this is something that you can always use a principle with uh, well-defined functions. If a is equal to b, then f of a is always f of b. The other way is not always correct because that means the function has to be one-to-one, -one, but a function uh, cannot have two different outputs for the same input. I'm talking about the normal functions, not the abnormal ones, of course. Anyways, so we got the result, did we? Not yet. Let's go ahead and simplify both sides. Well, left-hand side can be simplified because this is our something. So when you apply W to it, Remember, w t to the t gave you t, and of course, w something to the times e to the something is going to give you something, right? That's the rule. So now, w of this is going to give you negative z. Not the z itself, but pretty close. And on the right-hand side, we're going to have w of negative 1. We do not know what w of negative 1 is, but we're going to use a really nice tool called from alpha to find the value. And now we can negate both sides or multiply by negative 1, whatever you want to call that, and z is going to be 
the opposite of w of negative 1. Whatever that is, it's the opposite. We don't care, right? If it's 3, it's negative 3. If it's 1 half, it's 1 half. Obviously, it's not going to be real, right? So, one thing to keep in mind, though, the negatives do not cancel out. So, be very careful. Don't oversimplify. A lot of times, people are going to try to, you know, simplify things like this. Okay, this is just one. Well, it sometimes works. You probably know that, right? For example, this one will work, but not all the time. So, don't generalize it. Don't invent new rules. We have plenty of rules. Now, where do we go from here? First of all, I want you to make a guess what this is going to look like. All right? Ready? And... Wow. Ta-da! This is the value we're going to look at. And on the next page, uh-oh, that is a very complex number, isn't it? Yes. This is approximately, of course, I'm only giving you like five digits after decimal. I think good enough, but that is going to be the answer. And this brings us to the end of this video. Thank you for watching. I hope you enjoyed it. Please let me know. Don't forget to comment, like, and subscribe. I'll see you next time with another video. Until then, be safe, take care, and bye-bye.